I put it to him that Senator Johnson's view that the chaos and rioting in Wisconsin was understandable was something that people around the nation might accept. Well, first of all, I don't think we have the facts of what happened on the ground, the situation. Um, Second of all, what we've seen in many of these things are not spontaneous riots, but the product of organized criminal activity in, in many cities. Public safety is a prerequisite. It's a prerequisite for peaceful demonstrations, for dealing with the public health issues of COVID, for getting people back to work. And, and that only comes from when local, state, and federal law enforcement work together. We have a very decentralized system of law enforcement in the United States. And I think what they realized in Wisconsin was the governor and the mayor are very quick quick to acknowledge that they needed to bring in outside assistance to, first of all, calm the situation, establish public safety. That has to be the priority. I think that's the the right decision. I think places like Portland, Seattle, where they've been reluctant to do that, we have had multiple, multiple days, upwards of three months of violence in places like Portland, and it's really devastated the economy and the communities. Isn't the priority that the police stop shooting black men? And it's interesting that Mike Pence, the vice president, mentioned in his speech the rioting in Wisconsin, but actually didn't mention Jacob Blake. Well, I think the important thing in any situation in in which deadly force is involved is, first of all, you get the facts and you provide um, equal protection under the law and justice for everybody, uh, including the law enforcement. I mean, I think this is incredibly dangerous when we have snap judgments like you just made that shouldn't the police stop killing people when we don't even know the facts on the ground. I think it's very, very dangerous to the rule of law. It's virtually impossible in 24 hours in in, in an incident of deadly force to give conclusive assessments of everything that happened. Even when there are videos, there are different perspectives. Um, There's information that you may not see on the videos. There's context. There's lots of things we may or may not know. And to make snap judgments on the performance of police and then simply say, we're going to respond to how we feel about the incident and and disregard law and really destroy communities. Do you think that view of what is going on in Wisconsin and in other areas as well is going to be the majority view in the United States and that it will play into the election? I think Americans do care about public safety. I mean, I think... Uh, and I, they care that their businesses aren't destroyed. They want people to safely go to work. People want to be able to protest safely. So, yeah, I do think it's a serious issue for a, a vast amount of Americans. Voters want to deal with the public health issue and they want to deal with the public safety issue. So I think in a sense, you know, pe- people that don't recognize that are really out of tune with where, where it seems the, the public is. When you have this kind of mob violence in the streets, there are radicals who think it's not radical enough. And they think, no, 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 that you guys aren't being violent enough. And they will look for even more extreme violent solutions. And then you will have counter radicals who think that they have to go to the street and this is their time and, and this is a green light for them to do back. So the, the far extremes of radical activity in the, could be, and it, and it only takes a very few of those people to do really, really devastating things. And I don't think we want to create a permissive environment for that kind of activity. But isn't that the environment that Donald Trump has created in his first term by being so one-sided, by being so aggressive in what he says about community relations? No, I don't think that's true at all. I mean, look, we had no- nothing like this for four years. Um, we've This has blown up in the last couple of months, and we could debate what's the confluence that brought it together. Is it, you know, COVID? Is it the economy? Is it the hyper-partisan political atmosphere? Is it these organized groups, which have really been waiting for an opportunity to do this? But I think to blame it on the president is just to myopically pick somebody you don't like and just say, well, it's his fault. Jim Carafano, member of Donald Trump's uh, presidential transition team. Thank you very much for talking to us. Thanks for having me.